James Ogby, thanks so much for joining us on Newsmax TV. Thank you. Well, this week, Palestinian Authority officials plan to press for votes at the United Nations recognizing Palestine as a state. Palestinian officials are doing this against the wishes of Israel and the United States, both of which believe statehood for Palestine should be negotiated with Israel and cannot be granted by a UN vote. Why is Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas pressing for statehood recognition at the UN and why is he doing it now? There are several reasons. Uh, number one, um, Israel was the, the result of a UN vote. And the Palestinians feel that the appropriate venue is coming back to the UN to create the other half of the equation that the UN authorized back in 1948, and that is the state of Palestine that never came into being. Uh, might be late, but uh, there's no time like the present. The second is because Palestinians have lost faith in the negotiating process. Um, when Oslo was signed in 1993, uh, there were 263,000 settlers in the West Bank and Jerusalem. Uh, today, the number is 505,000 and growing. Um, in just the last several weeks, Israel announced uh, a number of housing units, about 4,000 housing units, which when completed would add maybe another 20,000 people to the West Bank. So that the negotiating process has not stopped this aggressive expansion into the West Bank a at all, nor have Palestinians become any freer to do business or to control water or the essentials of life in the West Bank. Uh, people point to the, the economic growth rate in the territories, but that's largely a function of international charity and not a function of domestic growth. They can't import or export freely, and therefore it's a stagnant uh, situation. Uh, finally, because the leadership has lost uh, credibility with a negotiating process that has not succeeded, um, the option is either to step down and resign and therefore terminate the authority and stop being what amounts to a, a sort of a front for a continued occupation uh, or to continue a violent resistance, both of which they reject. Uh, the third option is Let's go back to the world body and see if we can alter the dynamic by creating some kind of world pressure that says to the Israelis, get serious. Uh, the people of the world see this as a good thing. Our people see it as a good thing. The leadership needs a boost. They need a morale boost at home because they're losing ground with their people who are saying, 20 years of negotiations and what have you got us? The answer is nothing. That's why it's happening now. Will a UN statehood vote hurt the peace process by driving the Palestinian Authority and Israel further apart? You know, you have to assume that there is a peace process to ask that question, and there isn't a peace process. Uh, there's no peace process because the terms of reference have never been agreed to by Israel. They want to talk without conditions, but then they lay out their conditions, and that is settlements continue to be built, the wall continues to be built. They're not willing to cede land or water rights uh, where settlements are. 85% of the water of the West Bank is used by Israeli settlements and only 15% gets used by Israelis. Bethlehem, uh, the city where Jesus was born, um, is without water almost half the week and is without electricity for, for, for days on end because they're simply being strangled by this occupation. And so when one people are totally subordinate and totally under control, of the other party. There's no negotiations. What there is is dictation, and the Palestinians get to either whittle around the edges or accept the terms. They're not willing to accept the terms, and the U.S. has been shy in terms of its responsibility, that is to balance the equation so that both parties would approach negotiations as even. So the Palestinians have gone to the world community to say, you give us the leverage. You give us the ability to balance this equation with the Israelis. What they understand is a UN resolution can give them the right to statehood, but of course at the end of the day they have to negotiate how to implement that right. So they're not closing the door to negotiations. We should rather see a UN vote as a door opener to a more balanced negotiating process. Why do you think Turkey and Egypt are promoting a statehood vote and ignoring U.S. appeals against it? Well, because the U.S. is fundamentally wrong on this issue, totally wrong on this issue, uh, and they know it. The U.S. isn't doing this because even they think it's the right thing to do. They're doing it because they don't want to cross the Israelis, and the Israelis have been very firm on the fact that they don't want it to happen. They're playing chicken little, the sky's going to fall, disaster will come, it's doomsday. 
What they essentially mean is they've lost control of this discussion and the Israelis are control freaks in this instance. They want to dominate every aspect of Palestinians and Palestinians are being a little uppity by going to the world body on their own and saying, recognize us. The Israelis are never shy about dictating terms. They don't want anyone claiming the right to dictate their own terms. And so they've, uh, they've gotten a bit hysterical here in the U.S. is following suit. It's a bad thing. The Turks know it. The Egyptians know it. Um, and I think much of the world knows it. And I think we're lo not looking very good in the world community uh, doing what we're doing right now. Let me make another point, and that is that in the context of Arab Spring, Arab opinions matter. I'm not selling books. Um, my book about Arab voices uh, was about the importance of Arab public opinion. But, but that's the case. I remember when the Egyptian revolution occurred, people said, well, this has nothing to do with Israel. Uh, but what now we see from the demonstrations in Egypt, it has a lot to do with Israel. It has to do with the fact that Arab governments that ignored the wishes of their own people now have to pay attention to their people. This is a deeply felt injustice in that region. And so Egypt is responding, Turkey is responding, other Arab states are responding, much of Europe and the rest of the world is responding. The U.S. is on the wrong side of this and we really are making a mistake. Now, statehood recognition by the UN requires approval by the UN Security Council. Washington has promised to use its veto in the Council to block a Palestine statehood resolution. Do you believe that the U.S. will be joined in vetoing a Palestine statehood resolution by the UK and France? I don't know. Uh, what I'm not even sure of is whether it will come to a vote in the UN. I, I think that the, the big uh, maybe problem here uh, is that we may have built up this big hysteria for nothing because it's gone to the Security Council which may end up being the briar patch in this brer rabbit game. It's don't go to the Security Council, don't go to the Security Council, but that may be exactly where the U.S. wants it to be because the resolution will just be sat upon and studied by committee and dragged out for months and never come to a vote. That may very well be the, the situation that evolves here. Okay, but if Palestine statehood resolution does come to a vote, is vetoed in the UN Security Council, Palestine Authority officials have promised to press for a symbolic vote by the 193-member UN General Assembly. Does this vote matter in your view? Yes, it does, because if the Palestinians even get a non-member state status like the Vatican uh, or Kosovo, that would itself be an important victory. It would give the Palestinian leadership something to go home with uh, they would be able to join world bodies as equal members um, and it would be a, at least a symbolic victory uh, that would give them some standing in the world community. And then how badly would the U.S. and Israel be isolated on this vote? Well, they're already isolated is the point. It right. doesn't even have to come to a vote. Um, I, I mean, the U.N. session right now could, could adjourn. Uh, they could go home for the next six months. Frankly, no one would notice except for the fact that all the buildup between when this issue first started and now has already done the damage. We've, we've produced a, a, you know, a remarkable self-inflicted wound. It was unnecessary. Uh, we did it. We continued to do it with every new day's headline. And, um, and so we don't even have to vote. We've already done the damage. What should President Obama then be saying to the Israelis and the Palestinians? Well, from the very beginning, uh, what he should have said to the Israelis is, this will be over. Don't get excited. We're going to stand with you. We support your security. But Palestinians need this. And you need the Palestinian Authority to be strong so that they can maintain security, so that they can be a partner for peace. Don't kill your partner. Uh, let them have this vote. He could have done that and talked them down. Um, and to the Palestinians, he should have said, look, I understand. I understand what you're trying to do and I understand what your needs are but let's work with us to come up with some language that says that this resolution of your right to a state sets the framework for negotiations and build it into the resolution. That could have been done weeks ago. Instead, we got caught up in the Israeli hysteria, we got caught up in the game of trying to block it, stop it, and come up with something other than it so that there would be negotiations. The Palestinians could not have done what they did with Goldstone which is simply bend to the wishes of the United States and Israel and drop it. 
They needed something. We could have given them something and we didn't. And therein lies the, I think, the fatal error we made. All right, James Ogby, thank you. Thank you.